गुड इवनिंग welcome everyone to this evening's function we are celebrating this evening the birthday of swami shivananda who was a great disciple monastic disciple of sri ramakrishna and he was the second president of the ramakrishna order so his birthday falls on today according to the indian calendar and we shall every year we observe it in a very simple way and we shall do that this evening also the disciples of sri ramakrishna belonged to a different order swami vivekananda the foremost disciple of sri ramakrishna used to say pointing out to his brother disciples each one of them is a great giant of spirituality and in time the potentialities of each one will come out and his words became very true so long as he lived swam vivekananda these other disciples some were at the in the main monastery at belur mot some were elsewhere centers were very few then but after he died in 1902 then the <coughs> these great disciples their work began I first met Mahapurush Maharaj Swami Shivananda in 1925. That was a Shivaratri day. The special day for the worship of Shiva in the night whole night. He had been on a tour in several places and uh, a few days before shivaratri he had arrived in belur mot so shivaratri day was the earliest day for vacation so many devotees visited him in the morning and afternoon and at belur mot the the puja shivaratri is held all through the night so i along with my another friend who was already a disciple of swami shivananda we went to meet him and also to spend the night at velur mat so we were all waiting devotees are waiting in the <clears throat> front veranda overlooking the ganga river and after some time swami shivananda came down from up, upstairs then at that time he was not so old it was 1925 he died in 1934 at the age of 
So now calculate what could be his age in 1935. But he looked strong and straight and very imposing appearance and his, he was <coughs> not brown, he had a fair complexion. He got down and saluted everyone with hand and he was very happy, he looked so happy after being at Belmont after so many month, months of absence. <coughs> he greeted everyone. Many were old devotees, many were new. Then he sat down. <coughs> My friend, who later on became a sannyasin, he said, Come, I shall introduce you to Mahapurush Maharaj. I said, No, no, no. I, I was of a shy nature. There are so many people here and you are introducing me, that will be a scene. I don't want that. <coughs> he said, no, you must come. So he dragged me. He dragged me near him and he said, this boy, I was then studying in college, this boy comes to the mutt from time to time, and he looked at me. Then spontaneously I felt a great reverence for him. And this boy, my friend, was very clever. He knew what words to say. He said, this boy has fasted today. Well, oh, that's great! <laughs> Those who have come here this night and observed the sannyasins to perform the Shiva Puja, they are indeed fortunate. So he was very happy and looked at me. And that was my first introduction. But in my heart I felt Indeed, he is my guru, spontaneously felt. Then after a few days, I came. That was the purpose of asking for initiation. In those days, initiation were very few, very few. So I came and saluted him and he looked at me and I prayed that I want instructions from you. Then he said, that was the last month of the Bengali year. Usually no holy things are done in this month. So he said, this is the month of Chaitra. Let the first year, new year come. That was some weeks away, the month of Baishak. Let the new year come, then we shall see. So when the first of the new year came, I appeared. <laughs> then he recognized that he had met me and he had given me word. I said, I have, I, uh, what is necessary, some fruits and all, I brought flowers. And I told him I have come for initiation. Then he <laughs> laughed. Hello, oh, you have come on the first day. This is the day when many people will, that is the holiday. Many people will come, there will be crowds and all. So, another day you come. Then I said, then can I come tomorrow? <laughs> he had a hearty laughter and 
Then he said, all right, come tomorrow. <laughs> so I went next day and he, this modern, new, the present temple was not there, the old temple, which is still used. Uh, so he took me there and we sat and he gave me my mantra and spiritual instructions, how to meditate, how to do japa. First he made me salute the slippers of Sri Ramakrishna, which is kept in a glass case in, the, in that temple. Even now, no, not now anymore. So he made me salute and gave me spiritual instructions. Then I came down. Then I was a college student then, so whenever possible, on the, at that time there was steamer service between Calcutta and several places on the coast. Belur Mutt was one. So it was convenient then. No bus system then, no buses were up. So I used to come sometimes alone, sometimes with some of my friends and sit near him. And so these, these occasions are many before I finally joined. I joined in 1930. That is five years later, you know, my college course is going on. Then I <coughs> joined and he... Uh, some of the sadhus were very... Uh, they sometimes used to tease me that you are going on studies, you are already a science graduate, it is time now to join. Otherwise your mind will be drawn to higher research and all, and that will be an obstruction. I said, no, my life's purpose is settled for a long time when I was a boy. Well, no, we don't believe you. Like that they began to tease me. Then one of them, who was the secretary of Swami Shivananda, he dragged me up, upwards, will come with me then. Now they were astonished. No, no, I made a mistake. That was, that was a holy day, Buddha's birthday. So I came from Calcutta to attend the Buddha ceremony in the evening. And this is morning, I came. Then I said, no. Suddenly in my mind there was a fear. Well, this is Buddha's birthday. It is better. I was then a science student working in the laboratory. And so I, for the time being, there was an inspiration. I said, this is a holy day. Let me join. It, it is certain my life's goal that I, the, the householder's life is not for me, monastic life. So I said, I join this day. And they were astonished. They thought, they were teasing me and that I would take it very seriously and decide to join that day, that was an astonishment to them. So they looked at me, are you, is it right that you will join today? Well, yes, it is right, I have decided. Then one of them, who was Swami Shivananda's secretary, he dragged me up and took me to Swami Shivananda and said, this boy wants to join. <laughs> Then Swami Shivananda looked at me. Oh, I know this boy. All right, you take him to the secretary. Let him inquire eh, what he, his condition of his home, his parents and all, family, all these things have to be taken into account. 
So that was done, and then from that day I stayed in the monastery. And some sadhus advised me, if you want to be at Mat near Swami Shivananda, then you should enroll yourself in the Sanskrit school. There was a Sanskrit school at the Mat that was Swami Vivekananda's desire that the, the monks, brahmacharis here should thoroughly study scriptures in Sanskrit. And so a school was there, a pandit was there, different subjects, Vedanta, then now philosophy, Upanishad, several studies were there. So my friend said, if you want really uh, to stay here, in the company of Mahapurush Maharaj, then you should enroll yourself in the school. Are you, uh, do you like studying Sanskrit? Well, oh yes, Sanskrit was my school subject. I studied Sanskrit. I, I very, very much I would like. So I was enrolled as a student. So my sadhu friend said, now you are safe. Otherwise, any day you would be transferred to some school. <laughs> Since you are a graduate, uh, you will be sent to go to Madras or go to Deogar, uh, teacher, or some other work. You would not have the opportunity to have close company of Swami Shivananda. So I stayed continuously at Belurmat for four or five years. Then there was a flood relief work going on in Odisha. In Odisha we have a center, Bhubaneshwar, which was built by Swami Brahmananda. So I, I was sent there for relief work. So I was there for several months engaged in that. Yes, relief work, flood relief work. Then I came back and during these years Mahapurush Maharaj's health began to decline. He had asthma, very bad type of asthma. Sometimes he could not sleep. Whole night somebody, and there was no electric fan. Somebody had to, with hand fan, he had to be uh, fanned with. And there were sadhus always ready to serve him. Then slowly his health declined. But when his health was strong, he was a personification of compassion and kindness. If somebody would be ill, and in Belur Mat, you see the, because there is food offering to, to the master and all, very, uh, everything has its rules. So if somebody falls ill, he needs some special food, light, uh, then there is no arrangement. You cannot cook it in the, in the kitchen where this, uh, offering is being prepared. So we read accounts that Swami Shivananda himself would volunteer. So one sadhu fell ill and for a long time then he had to, he got well and he had to eat solid food and he needed some vegetable curry and uh, the Swami Shivananda himself said, I will make that curry vegetable for him, for you. And he went and made to a place where outside cooking could be done. He made, he cooked himself and he carried that whole bowl with some rice to that sadhu who was ailing. And he was astonished. He began to cry. Well, don't cry. What is that? I'm strong enough to do this. 
and every morning he would come down and walk and inspect how things are going on. He, he was very fond of the cattle. The cattle would graze in the mud yards. He would pat each cow, and the, the cows were as if they were eagerly waiting for his arrival. And he would take some branches and all, some, give them. And he had two dogs. He was very fond of dogs also. He said, these are my dogs and I am Sri Ramakrishna's dog. <laughs> and so all over he would ask and inquire from 6 o'clock or 6.30 to about 9.30, three hours in his room, there was a, a gathering. Sadhus would come one after the other, sadhus, brahmacharis, and salute him. And he would greet everyone so cordially, smile, he would ask their welfare, how he is doing. And that was a period of great inspiration, those three hours, and sadhus made it a point to attend that. Just yes, salute him and he would take his blessings, and he would from time to time uh, where is the clock gone? No, no, place it in such a place I can see. Yes. Eight o'clock. Already about half an hour. A little more, I shall say. There are many things. Then he was he was very active then. Then from active life suddenly slowly he his health declined. The asthma then he had uh, his, but in that body, even though he was sick, he was always talk of God and talk of Sri Ramakrishna. If somebody would ask some questions, he would answer. And he was a personification of kindness and holiness and wisdom. If you see his face, you see this man has realized God. And that showed in his face. So that was a blessed occasion for me to, to attain, that I was... Uh, so many sadhus are coming, you cannot block the, the space, so I would sit in one corner quietly and listen and see what happens. Sadhus are coming and he is greeting all sadhus, swamis, senior swamis, uh, in a way, and junior, some he would encourage. And his words were so, seemed to be so powerful. To some brahmacharya would say, you are very pure. Hmm? You are very pure. And I, all through my life, I have, re he is dead now. So I, I, when I remembered him, I said, Mahapurush Maharaj himself has said, you are very pure. He would, uh, on the brahmachari, he would insist very much on uh, keeping the vows and doing the, the practices received from the teacher, very much encourage them. At the same time, you would encourage them to do whatever work is there in the mud. He, he, they are the front a lawn, there was no temple then, there was a big lawn, but it was overgrown with tall grasses. Then once he said, can you cut these grasses? And he, by a hand sickle. So after your Sanskrit classes are over, you can, can you come and uh, do that work? I said, yes, Maharaj, I can do that. So every day I used to do that. 
huge lawn and I was doing only little section, so I was a little discouraged. He would watch from his window upstairs. <laughs> and then he would remark that boy is doing excellent work, but he should not be depressed. When Durga Puja is coming and everything should be clean. So one day he sent about a dozen of sadhus. You all go with city hmm? and clean that. And it was done. <laughs> it, I was very happy. <laughs> I thought it would take one year for me singly to do that. And so it was very clean and he was very happy. Then he was, during the time of Durga Puja, he was in ecstasy. And he made it a custom every morning to sing some song to the Master. So there was a, a drum player. He was of, uh, very famous all over India. So he used to spend about six months at Belur Mat. He was a disciple of Mahapurush Maharaj. So he used to play the drum. And there was another Swami who also died. He had a very good voice. And Mahapurush Maharaj taught him some songs himself. So he would sing. And I would go to play the cymbals. That was my practice of cymbals. And there are other swamis and brahmacharis who sometimes come. And uh, that was also a blessed occasion. But in the meantime, Swami Madhavananda, who was the assistant secretary, he had come to San Francisco for work, he stayed in San Francisco for about three years. But he was called back for official work there. He was a very competent person and a scholar also. He was the author of the Brihadaranak Upanishad and other books also. So he uh, uh, remarked one day, Mahapurush Maharaj likes music at the early morning but uh, that is a sort of disturbance to our meditation. He said that not seriously, because everybody had such great love and veneration and respect for Mahapurush Maharaj. Whatever he says, that is law, you see. So, but this Swami, out of little humor, he said, Mahapurush Maharaj likes loud m m music and they sing there, but we at that time, in our room, you want to be very quiet. Hmm? Mm -hmm. That was not serious, you see. So he was a very, he loved music. And particularly one song he liked very much. And that song, now Swami uh, Sarpa Devananda, he has a nice, sweet voice, and he knows that song. So after uh, the, the puja is over, he will sing that song, and I will play cymbals with him. Mm. And then the last days came, and there were so many. Uh, he had a stroke, and his uh, right side was completely. He had lo he could not speak anymore. His right side was paralyzed, but the left side was, or the brain was clear, that nothing happened to the brain. And so his usual daily chores went on. People would come to salute him at that time with the left hand, he would bless everybody. He would recognize, he would recognize people and bless them, but he could not speak. In that stage, about one year he suffered. Then in 1934, he passed away. And <coughs> so his memory, when I remember all those things, that is a sort of great meditation. Because such a man of God is rare. And he had great uh, respect for 
the brother disciples, particularly the Swamiji, from his room when he could walk, he would come out and walk, pace up and down in the but every time he would come, there was Swamiji's room and Swamiji's door was open, he would salute, Jai Swamiji Maharaj, Jai Swamiji Maharaj, he would say. Similarly, he had great regard for his other brother disciples. He would express that, his conversation. Such was his great personality to see him and to hear him and to be blessed by him was a real rare rare privilege which by god's grace i had and many others said many people have many of the sadhus the disciples have passed to the other shore very few are living i think uh, one of the swamis in kankal still alive and I am alive, and uh, he died at the age of 80, and uh, I am now 87. So when I remember him, I get that inspiration that whatever work I do, it is his advice was you shall combine, you will do your meditation, but never forget to the service of Sri Ramakrishna through different work here. And I had also several times been scolded by him for my foolishness. See? Once I, I, I had the responsibility of taking care of Swami Vivekananda's room to clean that room and so I, one, one day I was late, there was a rain, a wind, a rain came. I was late somewhere, I rushed there, but by that time the windows were left open. And Mahaprish Maharaj was sitting there uh, in a chair, and he had asked his attendants to go. That boy has not come yet, and he go close Swamiji's because he felt that Swamiji was still present there. He would say, do you think Swamiji is not here? He is present here. So I came and then he called me and said, where were you? Well, sir, I, wa I was shaking in fear. Then, well, don't do that, boy, Swamiji is here. And had he been living, could you have done that? and uh, don't think that he is a picture, huh? like that. And this thing happened once again, another day. <laughs> that day, again, he looked at me and saw my plight. Then he had sympathy for me. He, he wanted to scold me severely, but instead he said, are you studying Upanishads? <laughs> <laughs> I say, yes, Swami Maharaj, I study Upanishads. Well, Upanishad study is good, but don't uh, neglect bhakti, devotion. With folded hands you should pray to Sri Ramakrishna. You give me devotion, give me renunciation, vivek, vairagya. Hmm? Every day you should pray, because by His grace one can attain self-knowledge. Uh, Self-knowledge cannot happen if he is pleased. Like that he impressed me several times. I would not speak more because there are so many things to say. And so now I request um, Swami Prapananda to begin the worship.
सारे लीला लहरी उठिल मृदुल करुणा बाई इन इन्फिनिट कॉन्शियसनेस ऑफ ब्रह्मन देर अरोज रिपल्स ऑफ कंपैशन आदि अंतहीन अखंड विलीन माया धरी ले मानव काय देर इज नो बिगिनिंग एंड नो एंड to that brahman of consciousness and that compassion took a concrete human form in the form of an avatar monero opar huh? monero opar monero opare kotha kono desh there is a region which is beyond the mind sashi tapon er nahi parobesh neither the sun nor the moon can enter into in that region tabo hashi rashi kiran varashi ujale ha ha apne ujale jetha ujale se thai charu jo hai but your addressing sri ramakrishna the avatar the incarnation the writer says but your smile your divine smile spreads and illumines everything though there is no physical sun or moon but your divine smile of compassion eh? charu vivai beautiful splendor it spreads all over the universe the premero etonu premero etonu atanu ganyan your body dio your human body is made of love and compassion ki madhuro vivaha ki madhuro vivaha vikase nayan what beautiful splendor Yeah, is revealed in your human body as avatar descending from that infinite brahman whoever sees that who has have the opportunity of seeing that form uh, he, he gives he surrenders his body mind and prana to 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 you tumari aashwa तुम्हारी आशाय कत जुगत संशय जत आज तिरोहित इन योर एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ योर कमिंग हाउ मेनी एजेस हैव पास्ट एंड नाउ यू हैव कम देर इज नो मोर एनी डाउट जामार लह उपहार शपिनु जीवन तब सेवा व्हाट एवर आई हैव आई ऑफर एंड टू डी my whole life i offer in your service that is the english words of this song jo dal karo na ki na ki ha चौथल करो चुप चुप करो अच्छा करो
Yeah. 